Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is V.me, and welcome to Getsu Fumiden Undying Moon 1.0 release. Getsu Fumiden is out now on PC and Nintendo Switch. This game combines the intense roguelike hack and slash action with a stunning dark fantasy world, brought to life through the stroke of traditional Japanese art. The gameplay is inspired by roguelikes like Dead Cells, but with a Castlevania-like take on it, which includes massive boss fights that crank up the excitement and difficulty as you progress through the game. Before we get started, I want to thank Konami and BuzzGuru for sponsoring this video. Thank you for choosing this channel to showcase this game. The gist of the game is, as the chosen leader and guardian of the land of the living, wield the otherworldly arsenal and powers of the Getsu clan as you overcome multiple deaths and descend deeper into the depths of hell to eradicate the source of the cataclysm. But before I say too much, let's go ahead and just hop into the game and I'll show you everything you need to see. Yo, I'm pumped to hop back into this game. I haven't played this since early access, so seeing the 1.0 release is actually so good. The game's got good art, good music, good everything. There's even other playable characters. Um, I have access to Getsu Renge, who you unlock as you play through the game normally. We won't be using her today, I'm going to stick to Getsu Fuma, who I'm more familiar with when it comes to playing the game. Uh, we're also playing, as you see, there's other difficulties. Um, we're not on the tutorial difficulty, I'm one step up above that. And I have just a little bit of meta progression as well. Um, a lot of that is listed here under Train and Secret Arts. It's things like maximum HP up, drop rates, damage up, all of those basic items. Um, but there's also tons of unlocks too. Between all the different weapons, there's swords, umbrella, dual swords, tomfas, clubs, flail, spears. Um, there's sub weapons too. You have bows, kunai, caltrops, rifles, bombs, all kinds of different stuff in there. Proceed to the land of Limbo. Now, personally, I don't have a specific item um, that I do better with than others. It's honestly whatever pops up that looks good, I'm using. As you can see, this is an action roguelike. You have enemies that spawn, but your character is a beast. And no matter what the enemy can do, you can do better. Ooh, let's try this club out a little bit. Oh my god, it actually one taps. <laughs> Alright, don't need to use the uh oh watch out. I actually dodged that. No need to use the sword here. We already have our good weapon. But the visuals of the game definitely was the first thing that I saw. Wow, arrow blaze? Massively pogged up weapon. Just like other action roguelikes and metroidvanias, there's a huge map to traverse. Um, some hazards that we have to go over. Chests that we have to find. I think there's even an elite monster over here. Yeah, this is a good time to test out our bow. Half its health. Boom! And that's at range too. Oh my god, I love the actual pistol. Or I guess you maybe call it a long rifle. As I said, I do have some hours in the game already. So I know a little bit of the gameplay and how to deal with certain monsters as you're playing through the game for the first time. Just like every other action roguelike, it's die and get better. Look at the detail in the background. Konami's actually posted a ton of videos about their creation process in regards to this game. And I definitely admire it. Now, in my head, I'm thinking that, okay, you know, as someone who's played a lot of action roguelikes, a lot of popular ones as well, maybe there's a world where, you know, Konami decided that this guy right here, this V.me person, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to these games. He's played them for years. So maybe, maybe we want him to check out this awesome game. I'm gonna put one point in my main stats. That helps keep our uh, weapons powered up. Even though I really like the club that I have right now, I, I might not really get rid of it. Oh, this is a new weapon I've never seen before. Swift Chain. You can carry two items at a time. 
Okay, let's test on this thing. Oh, so it's like a whip almost. It has almost a figure eight attack to it. Which is really cool looking. And then every attack, well, every weapon has a special attack to it using a Y. If you're on a PC controller, triangle if you're using a PlayStation controller. Um, this could be held, which has to do something massive. Just have to figure out how to get like a good positioning. Or you shoot. Let's see what's in the shop here. So I have activate. If I do this, I can power up the weapons that I have. Um, that also allows me to activate special affixes on my weapons. On the spiny punisher, I have things like break attack increase. And what that does is that the base abilities of the weapon are enhanced. Um, but as I said, I can go above and beyond that and actually buff the weapon itself. We can give it two points. Which is going to make it much, much stronger. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the arrow blades that I got earlier. That seems to be a really, really strong weapon. Oh, but we don't have enough purple flame. Okay, we got to make sure we come back to this once I get more. All right, we found our exit, but I think I want to clear a little bit more. There's a lot of enemies on the map and enemies are blocking chests. They might have purple flames as well. Oh, I thought that was going to hit me. <laughs> I love how I could just sneak behind it and do that. The skeleton's completely unaware of what I'm doing. Okay, here's our chest. Open it up. Get some currency. As well as a soul. Now, the souls are probably one of the most important parts of the whole game. Um, yeah. It is a powering up system where you as the player can kind of decide where you want the power to go. The first time you pick up a flame, it highlights your main hand. The second time you pick up a flame, it highlights your sub. And I could have used it on main if I wanted to. But I'm actually waiting to get a third soul flame so I can level up my health. And health is usually a good option if you have no idea what you want to do build-wise. Okay, I think I have enough purple flame to do this upgrade. This could honestly be massive because this bow is so strong right now. We need to raise rank. Yeah, there we go. It only has three shots to it before it goes on cooldown. But I feel like those are just enough to do as much damage as we need on the boss coming up. Now, as I said, I have played this before. I know how to fight most bosses. I think I have won one in this game so far. So this one coming up. I think it's Ryu Kosuki? Let's get the full name. And look at the size and detail of this thing. Yeah, Ryu Kosuki. Alright, nice dodge. Just wanna blow off all my cooldowns if I can. Oh, they got me in the corner. Ooh, I'm getting drained? Oh, that might be my drain, actually. Yeah, you can see in the top right corner of the monster's health bar, I have a special effect going on it. Boom! Dodge roll? Oh, it was too soon. Yeah, I'm actually leeching life off of it. See if we can get a really big hit here. Ooh. Look at the massive damage dealt to it. It didn't like that, but it doesn't matter. Now you might think, okay, V, the weapon looks a little slow. Are you sure that I can do that? Don't worry about it. 
Just land those hits. That's all you need to do. All right, first boss is done. We get some currency. Here we have four spirits, four souls. So we have the option to really upgrade whatever I want. I think we're going to upgrade my health by one. And then I'll save the other one for when I get the chance to do health again. All right, we're going to keep pumping up this spiny punisher. Because this thing is actually doing work. I feel like I could use it to the end of the game until a better weapon comes across. All right, so now we have choices. Again, this is a roguelike Metroidvania. So we have two routes open to us. One, one route still closed. I think I'm more familiar with Hellfire Cliff, so I'm going to go here instead. Now that I've never been to the water map before, but to make sure that uh, I have the best chance at survival, we're going to go some place we've seen before. Yo, that attack is so massive. Alright, this is better than the musket. So we're getting, gonna go ahead and swap that in. No friendly fire, right? Yeah. Almost <laughs> couldn't remember. Oh, I'm bleeding! But look at the power of the bow. Like against normal skeletons? Oh! Don't even have to worry about using regular melee attacks. We could just shoot them now. If you haven't already been able to tell, we have skills alongside of our two melee weapons. So I'm using bomb plus the bow. That's pretty good because it looks like I can hit everything two times with the club. We have a spinny attack in the air too, which is actually massive. Hold that for me. Wow, I love that attack so much. All right, these are elite monsters. Typically, they're pretty strong. I'm pretty strong too, so we could just go up to it, get the power attack, the launcher, and then finish it off right after. Look at that detail in the background. So as I was saying in the intro, we're basically facing hell. The world is, not to say it's ending, it, it probably is to some degree. Um, but bad things have happened with our clan, and now it's up to us to kind of make everything right. But the Oni, as you can see in the background, are basically in the real world right now. Or we, or we're like in limbo, I think. The only are back there making a uh, human stew. We're actually starting to see a lot of enemy types now. There are these giant heads <laughs> that are flying around the map. There's these goblin looking things that are jumping on me. As well as the normal skeletons that are running around. We're pretty good versus basic skelly. Really, it's the other stuff. Things like this that are jumping at us. Things like the flying head that's floating around the map looking for us. Those are where we're going to get into trouble. But as long as we keep up the pressure. Like I said, in games like this, you have to know that you are better than the monster. As soon as you keep up that edge, you'll be unstoppable. So certificate of authenticity, certificate certifying an item's rarity required to unlock the mastery skill, increase initial equipment rank. So I still have a lot of unlocks that I'm working on throughout the game. Ooh, Shigenana, the great mallet. Is that better than my spiny punisher? It is. It's actually fairly strong. Level five. I think we're picking it up. I get back a 
decent amount of my purple flame. So we can kind of reinvest that back into this weapon. That way we maintain the power level. Look at the damage coming through. Okay, so I believe I have fully cleared the map. I'm gonna make a way into the boss. And I wanna say I remember this one too. This one's a lot grosser than uh, the last one. But I, I should have enough experience to get through this. Ryu Kozuki is always like a fantastic looking boss. But when you go into the underworld depths and you see a giant centipede, that's uh, it's a little different. All right, colossal centipede. I do have a really slow weapon too. Boom. I mean, at least it kind of works. I can go on top of it. Ah, oh, I was in the wrong spot there. Jump. Okay, decent damage. That was a close one. All right, this is gonna be a little tougher, I feel. Thing is shooting at me? Yeah. Typically when I'm playing in this game, especially using a weapon, I have something a lot faster than a weapon like this. So this is a little new for me. I mean, that was pretty good damage if you ask me. Oh my god, I thought it was gonna spit at me. Seven forty four. It's not half bad. We can land the headshots, though. Oh, I thought I had the dodge roll. There we go. That's what we like to see. All right, good hit, good hit. I want to say I'm okay not to have to use the health pot. Just little hits here and there. That's all we need. Oh, it's getting much faster. All right, dodge. Almost, I'm still missing it. See if we can get the full charge here. Oh my god, I wasted it. Alright, good spot. Good job, me. There we go, that's the dodge we like to see. <laughs> like I just barely found the spot. Nice. Not the cleanest kill I've had of that boss. But you know what? I feel good about that one. Using a weapon that's a little slow. And again, as someone who hasn't come back to this game in a long time. Oh, that was a full heal too. So we're going to do sub up two times. Because I think my sub weapons, even though I really like the bow and the grenade, I think we could do a little better coming up. All right, onward to the next area. Uh, need a key to open this path. This is Misty Peaks, which is like a hidden mist area. And then Frozen Graveyard. And we also have the option to go back to Getsu Clan. And that way... Because it's a roguelike, you will basically, as with all roguelikes, when you die, you go back to the beginning. 
Uh, you could choose to go back manually and take your materials with you. Um, in that case, you might be low on health. You might be out of health pots. As you see, I'm still full, so I'm feeling pretty good about myself. So I may as well keep going. Oh, that's the Oni? I was about to say, that was a little bit of a gutsy move from me, but you know what? It actually worked out. Now, this map is actually really unique compared to the other ones. On this map, the mist is blocking the exit. Ooh. Was that like hyper armor? I don't know what that blue number was. But we have to clear out the mist in order to proceed. There's things on the map like this right here. When I kill it, some of the mist is revealed. But we still have a little bit more that we need to reveal. I do believe that there is random generation to the maps. Oh, that was close. I'm almost glad that it threw me down. See, our bow is still strong enough to kill a basic skeleton, but I know it's not going to be that way for the entire game. Now, I should also say that I'm not fully committed to the hammer. As soon as I get one of my favorite weapons, like the twin swords, I'll probably swap. Oh, we're getting all kinds of different enemies now. So that was a wisp? The wisp does a ground attack and you have to basically pay attention to it even if you have it in a combo. It's already casted the ground attack so you need to actually react to it. And again, just like other Metroidvania roguelikes, you're learning this stuff as you play the game. So you can trust me when I say I've gotten hit by a lot of this stuff a lot of times. And that's the only reason why I know what I'm doing. Ooh, this is a different monster. Bell Oni. Oh, it has just enough <laughs> armor to defend itself against me. Okay. I see you. But yeah, I always like this map for the ambiance. You can see the tower in the background. You can see the mist. Monsters rushing at you, not knowing I have a giant mace. And it has the eerie music behind it too. So you definitely feel like you're in sort of a folklore stage. Which is honestly one of my favorite aesthetics when it comes to video gaming is this right here. Ooh, here we go. This is a big eyeball. So surely this is the first key for us to get through. Boom! Must find the other eye. Ooh, we got a big Oni right here. How do we handle big Onis? Try a bomb. 1,500 damage off that bomb. I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty decent at Getsu Fumadin. We know how to throw the giant bomb. We know how to hit the giant eyeball. Both evil eyes have been defeated path is now open. All right, onward to our next boss. I, I've i died to this boss probably more than any other boss in the game. Uh, my gear, I don't even think my gear is very good for it, but we're going to try our best. Believe it's a 2v1 situation. A Raijin and a uh, Umijin. I, I, I don't know what the other one is. I think it's Cloud, but I don't know what Cloud is. Yeah, Raiki and Fuki. They're equally as bad. Okay, we gotta dodge this. Oh my god! That was close. I was going to say, it looks like... 
Does my, my weapon still good? My hammer, at least. I don't know where it's aiming. Alright, maybe we interrupted it? Oh, we got back out? I think we might be canceling attacks. I, I always get hit by one of these. <laughs> it's actually pulling me in. I feel like I should focus on one at a time. Of course they're gonna do that. Oh, that's not what I meant to do at all. All right, here we go, this is good. Never mind. Opposite of good. All right, let's use the health pot. That was close. Ooh, I didn't know it could do more. Is here safe? Who knows? Oh, massive hit just then. Using that rifle. One. Oh my god, I just need a little bit more. More. Okay, here we go. This is a safe spot. If only I could hit it. Oh no, that wasn't worth it. I was gonna say, if only I could hit it with the whip where I was. Okay, you're dead. I'll use another health pot here. What is this? Okay. Dodge Master. Also, that thing's a Dodge Master. Wow. Alright, we got this. Ooh, I think that interrupted it. All right, we gotta get out. Oh my god. One more? Oh, I ran out. Boom. Oh, okay. <laughs> that scream. That was hard. I have really slow weapons. Typically, I have like the fast dual daggers or just a regular katana. But when you're rocking the uh, the giant mace as well as the uh, whip, definitely a huge difference. All right, we'll get a health pot back using the souls we picked up. All right, we're going to keep bolstering this hammer. What we're doing is we're unlocking new kinds of affixes, I guess you would call it, that I'll be able to use in the future. Until you do this part, they're locked behind uh, materials that drop from monsters. Each weapon uses different kinds of materials. Some are shared, so it's a good idea to unlock everything that you see if you can, unless you have something specific that you're working on. All right, the next area, we have Avenue of Pleasure and Illusion, an area that I have not seen yet. So we'll go into this map. I actually think this map might be my favorite one out of all of them, purely from the aesthetic. We have basically Entertainment District. With really weird, like, mole rat looking things. More giant faces that are also like spiders on the inside. Very nasty. 
But look at the design on this map. It's so nice. This one's really interesting because you traverse to the backside. Where it's all like gritty and nasty. And things like this show up. Like this is the decrepit zombified version of Entertainment District. Luckily, because I'm so strong. I'm not like super concerned. Oh, I should be jumping over that. That's the strat. But still, like, nasty monsters are nasty, no matter how strong you are. Ooh, elite version. Something else is attacking me from up top. Gotta be really careful on this map. As I said, I did play this game in early access. I can definitely feel a lot of improvements in regards to the gameplay itself. Not that I really struggle with gameplay when I play, because again, I do a lot of action roguelikes. This is basically in my wheelhouse. I'm glad to see that they were able to do even more in regards to responsiveness, uh, combos, enemy stagger, like all of that stuff. Really important in these kind of games. I don't know if you all can see, but my character is actually illuminated in blue. As you go through a map quickly, you actually get demonized. Where the character becomes supercharged. And so long as you go through the map without getting hit, you do a lot of bonus damage. Alright, here's a new monster. Is that like a... Is that a Shimasen? Is that the name of the weapon? Ooh, and it fires bombs out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> that could be really dangerous if you're melee, I feel. Those tablets give you a health flask back. So now we're back at three, which is my current max. There we go. I do have a new spear weapon. The spear is honestly one of my favorites. It has really cool combos, really good range. And as you see, I'm demonized again. So for some reason, I, I don't know what the special attributes are, but spear is really good at becoming demonized. That gives us a bunch of bonus damage. My speed is really good as well. And we were able to go like back and forth to the different shops. All right, here we go. This is the, probably the last boss I'm going to do for the video here. This one, again, really good aesthetic. Huge fan of the boss and the boss arena. And I'm hoping that I still have what it takes to get a dub on something like this. Like, look how nasty that is. <laughs> That, that's a demon. Spear's really good here, too. It's just fast enough with its... Oh, God. Look at all of these. But I have to remember how this fight works. Okay, so... It activates some of the enemies on the screen. It also can power itself up by going to eat bosses. Put down these cow traps. I don't know where I am. Okay, I got stuck in there. I'm trying to decide, like, do I want to go for the, uh, the ladies? Because the spider eats these. And definitely, if it eats them, something bad's gonna happen. Okay, so you all are gonna get eaten. I, 
got a massive hit just then. Okay, this one has to go. Oh, there's another one right below it, too. I think I'll just heal here. Oh, yeah, it's eating it. All right, we got a little bit of demonization. Ah, I think that's my first time getting hit by that. Okay, I think we stopped it from getting an E off. Okay, good, good. I just love the aerial attack with the spear. It's so nice. Alright, there we go. Ooh! With the execute! <laughs> I love the scream from these things. It's so funny to me. All right, so with that, I think we have a couple more options. Oh, there's only one option, which is the Ancient Battleground. But you know what? To avoid spoilers, I'm actually going to go back to Getsu Clan, turn in my blueprints, turn in all my rewards I've gotten. As you can see, stage progress and equipment be will be lost, but all items will be brought back. So that's one way, if you're not feeling confident on being able to clear the next area, you can deposit the blueprints you've gotten. You're basically like your soul is leaving your body and going back to uh, maybe your other body. I, I, I don't know exactly how it works. But as you can see, I have so many things that I still need to unlock in the game. And I still have another character too. Get to Renge. Who I have almost no experience with at all. Once again, big thanks to BuzzGuru and Konami for allowing me to play this. If you enjoyed Getsu Fumiden, if you're going to pick it up on the Switch, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, this is a roguelike Metroidvania. You are going to die when you play this game. I have experience with the game already, so that's why I was able to kill these bosses. If you die, that's part of the process. That's the learning when it comes to a roguelike. Let me know what you think about me doing these kind of videos. I always love to showcase new and existing roguelikes on the channel. I'm glad that you could tune in to check it out. Be sure to click the link in the description if you're interested in the game. You can catch it on both Switch and on PC. Subscribe, like, do all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, I will catch you on the next video.